Um, my name is Michael Schultz. It's a sincere pleasure to be here today. Um, London has a very special place in my heart. I'll just give you three snippets. Number one, I used to live and study here, work here. Number two is in 2012, I'm, I'm sure some of you will have heard of the Mongol rally, so I bought a very questionable and shitty car and drove from London to Mongolia. And number three, I actually was in this hall picking up my bib for the London Marathon earlier this year. So lots of good memories, lots of good uh, experiences here. And um, I also have the pleasure of having joined Commerce Tools about two, two and a half years ago. For those of you that are not familiar with Commerce Tools, Commerce Tools is the global leader in composable commerce. So we provide the independent components for retailers, for our customers, to run tremendous and outstanding shopping experiences. So we have customers like Kingfisher Screwfix, Mars, Domino's, John Lewis Partnership, um, Alta Beauty, Lululemon, you name it, Peloton. And they choose Commerce Tools because they expect more from their digital experience. They expect more scalability and more flexibility from their business, all while increasing efficiencies and at lower cost. And that's why they're, they're coming to us. And so I wanted to start because I love things of three, and I just gave you three examples of like my sort of association and, and, and passion with London. I wanted to start off with things that are really hard. Like this is almost like a master class. This is almost like mastering a skill. And so what's really hard to, to do and to say? One of the first things being, um, I love you. Um, that's one of the hardest things to do unless your mate gives you a couple of pints of beers. And number two, I was wrong. And then I think we've all been in the situation where number three is Worcestershire Shire sauce and nobody can pronounce this. And I think 99% of the population on this planet has the disease of not being able to pronounce that. But when they ask me to do give these talks, they obviously also say, know your audience. So I don't think that really counts as number three here. And I'm going to go with some sort of personal experiences of either myself or other folks. And I'm sure you've been in those situations where you said things like, this campaign failed, this project failed, this IT project failed. And you had those tough conversations with your either business leadership, your CIO, and your CTO. And so this session is all about understanding the and understanding and mastering commerce integrations and really tell you about as leading retailers choose to adopt a composable approach, what are the intricacies of managing that and how do we deal with these uh, integrations as such. And I'm sure some of you have seen this chart from 2011, this is the popular chief MarTech officer, and we're looking at the broad space of marketing and e-commerce technology, right? So you're seeing all these different categories. You're seeing about 150 logos of what someone in 2011 looked at when they were trying to build out these stunning, tremendous, and impeccable uh, shopping experiences. And since then, things have pretty much escalated. So we're looking at over 11,000 point solutions on how you as a retailer or in similar sort of businesses or industries that have a digital transaction associated with that have to deal with and look at everything from content management, order management, I don't know, social media, you have it, you name it. And so I think that in and of itself seems to be a daunting task because when you're looking at a composable future and you're composing your modern commerce tech stack, you're looking at that, that looks pretty scary. And then when you take that into consideration with this project might fail or this integration is too hard, it's even more daunting. And when we look at analysts like Gartner, they pretty much says, you know what? We came from a world where we worked with monolithic legacy all-in-one suite vendors, you name it, the ATGs, the SAPs of the world, the Hybrises of the world. <clears throat> and we are moving forward to this composable future where everything is really a ecosystem of best of breed partners and not one single vendor is at the forefront. And so where we kind of like, like to differ with this statement from Gartner is that we still as commerce tools, we see ourselves as the foundation, the infrastructure to enable all of these point solutions. 
Um, and so that's a, a slightly different take on this quote, but this quote is definitely true as well. And so it's not always just working with these 11,000 like point of sale or like point of uh, point solutions. Like these are very, very simple problems we sometimes face. And so I want to go through two examples of just recent customers that we had engaged with. Uh, the first one being an enterprise retailer and they had a seasonal event coming up, a holiday sale effectively, and they wanted to integrate a new PSP very, very quickly within a week. And they were able to do so. But if you're familiar with these kind of like challenges before, I mean, I've worked with other retailers in previous lives, and sometimes just simply a PayPal integration took two months. Um, I've been, if we're looking at the, the COVID pandemic and we remember how everybody was gung-ho on NFTs and crypto and the metaverse and what have you, right? Like how can we add these sort of capabilities to a checkout process, to a payment service provider, to a payment gateway? And so there are basic things that I think we all struggle with and in, in sort of integrating that and, and we're going to talk on about the intricacies on how to solve that. We also had um, another retailer, so this is not all about just enterprise. I think in the, in the small and medium-sized business, as well as in mid-market, these issues and these trends are equally true. And so we actually worked with a small retailer, um, just recently came off Magento, and they realized we are growing so significantly, we need to add distribution centers, warehouses, we need to order, um, like, effectively add an order management system because our customers strive for visibility, they want to know where products are, and we also want to offer additional customer experiences like buy online, pick up at store, buy online, ship from store, all of those kind of things are very, very hard to, to integrate, and we were able to do that in a day. And I'll tell you in a little bit how we did that. And I think one thing to note here really is that technology always seems to be the, the holy savior of all of these things. And I'm not saying it's not, but technology should always be an enabler of business and business success. Technology should never be an inhibitor of such. And so I think the way that we're looking at integrations now is we think that these can really empower to build these composable experiences so you can meet the demand of today and also tomorrow. It's not all about future proofing, it's being ready for whatever the, the world throws at you, whether it's inflation, whether it's supply chain issues, whether it's any sort of anything else that's going out in, in this crazy world right now. And so the good news is integrations are gonna get easier. It's very hard to believe, but that's the truth. And um, when we look back to some of the things and quotes that Gartner has shared with us, um, we're seeing that 86% of organizations said if business users could actually build these integrations in sort of a low code, no code kind of environment, it would really increase their outcomes. We're also seeing that as early as in three months from now, we will have technology products and services that will be built by business users. So no functional consultants, no DevOps kind of folks, no like crazy tech folks and sort of some agencies, but business user can build these, technology, uh, these, these products and services. And lastly, I think it's amazing at the uplift and the uptake on how we can accelerate these digital business initiatives and the outcomes on how we do that. But the question at the end of the day is always, how are you, how are you going to do that? And what are the right tools for you to accomplish that? Um, and that's a very, very fair question, right? And so I think the world that I want to live in, at least in the business world, is where I can fine tune my tech stack, where I can build my composable stack, my experience in minutes, where I can just easily toggle on and off different experiences, different features, any way, which shape or form my customers demand from me, and then also have the peace of mind to, to actually accomplish that with the security, with the scalability, and with the flexibility in mind. So it's my great pleasure that we are at the, actually today on this conference announced Commerce Tools Connect so Commerce Tools Connect is the first enterprise-grade um, in, in, integration framework that really lets you select, configure, and run all of the different ISV integrations, all of the point solutions that you've seen before, um, run, build, manage, all at your fingertips, all from a business user and tech user perspective. 
So let's double click into that because I want to be really, really clear how sort of amazing this is and game changing this is. Because this is not just another marketplace. This is not going to your old e com vendor saying, oh, I'm going to look for partners and I'm going to get a list or an inventory of, oh, I have an OMS here or CMS here or, or what have you. This is a plug and play environment where you can switch these integrations on. This is not a, I'm going to the site, I'm downloading a zip file, I'm gonna host it on my basement server and I'm having an agency do this in six months for half a million dollars, right? This is not what this is. This is literally plug and play. Uh, we've reduced the development costs because we're standardizing these integrations and therefore improving all of these. Um, we're improving productivity the developers that initially would have done this sort of job can focus on more value-adding tasks. And the key thing for me is we are providing you with the runtime environment. And, why, and while that sounds very technical, this literally means we are managing your integration, we have your integration, we are owning it from a support perspective, we have an SLA associated with that, and we will make sure this thing better work in the performance that you require. So I think this is really the key here. Um, again, all of that focusing on ultimate productivity. We don't want your business consultants, your DevOps, your business analysts sitting there writing tech specs and business requirements for this to work. We want them to work on more value enhancing things because we want you to build the most stunning experiences for your customers. So we're really real, uh, reducing the DevOps resources there so that the integration effort is significantly less. We also want to improve the time to value or the time to market. Again, we can now do things in minutes or in days as opposed to weeks and months. And that's a real game changer here. All while we are giving you the resilience, the security, and all the SLAs that you could possibly imagine that this thing is working. And this is also, again, just to be very, very frank, this is not just, hey, here's your little zip file working on this on-prem server in the basement or even this is running in Google Cloud or AWS and you have to manage it, you have to maintain it, you have to deploy it, you have to monitor it and all the associated costs with actually doing all of these things. All of that, we take the heavy lift away and we worry about that. And all you get is an SLA and we commit to that. And so I'm very, very happy that we have a lot of these partners already on board. So you see a couple of payment service providers there, email marketing, promotion engines, search, CMS, uh, OMSs. So these are kind of like our funding partners. We have a long list and a long roadmap of additional partners that are coming on. Bear in mind that all of the partners that we have, and we have over 300 partners, already have integrations to commerce tools, and they're onboarding at the moment to be available on Connect. And so this is a great start but this is certainly not where we're gonna finish. And since that's not already good enough, I wanna make three different models very, very clear to us and really sort of like highlight what a game changer this is. So number one, that's kind of like the baseline. That's what you already know, right? You have your, you have your sort of pre-built connectors. That's no different to what you had with any of the other e -com platforms before. This is your sort of zip file of this is the integration, gets you 80% there. Um, that's kind of like table stakes for us. The difference here though is it still runs on our infrastructure. So when you deploy commerce tools, this again is not just sitting on an on-prem server. This is not only co-located with whatever cloud infrastructure provider of your choice. This is literally built alongside commerce tools on the same, the very same infrastructure. So that's already a, a differentiator. And that's the first model. The second model is enhanced connectors. So you can take any one of these connectors or integrations or extensions, whatever you choose to call them, and enhance them. So when and if you build these tremendous shopping experiences for your customers, you can choose how they behave and how they fit your business needs and how they fit your business model. And you can do that all within a couple of days. So we're not talking weeks, we're not talking months, and you can sort of build these out. We certify them, there's a self-certification process in place, so it's not like you're having to like submit an IT ticket and then wait for two weeks for even us acknowledging it. This is available in a couple of days. 
And then, even more so, we're looking at custom connectors. So we're coming, obviously, from this notion of these all-in-one, monolithic, legacy kind of like vendors, which get you 80% there. And then the 20%, you're just customizing the heck out of that, right? And you have to worry about version releases, testing, QAing, backwards compatibility. Is this connector been built before this release came out? None of this applies here. And even better, you can also build your own custom connectors. So any use case or every business scenario or business use case that you wanted to visualize and productize, you can do that. So we're talking about everything from a very basic card validation logic to building out your next marketplace or your next lo customer loyalty program. Everything can be built. And then again, we're going that one step further where you don't have to, again, host this on some on-prem server or on a different Google cluster or whatever. You let this thing certify, and we are running this on our infrastructure. We deploy it, we manage it, we monitor it, and we give you one SLA that this thing doesn't break. And so I think that is a, that is a real game changer. And to close off, I just want you to take three things away. Number one is, if you haven't embarked on that digital transformation or if you haven't embarked on this composable commerce journey, I think have a look, talk to us, we're happy to talk. We have amazing partners, both on the system integrator and agency side, um, and just enjoy the ride. Number two, really important, even though all of these 11,000... <coughs> I always wanted to play for the Foo Fighters, and this is what I thought it would sound like. Um, Number two, integrations just got easier. So again, this 10,000 point solution system could be really amazing, but it's also overwhelming. But just have the peace of mind that we're able to provide these plug and play kind of environments for all of our partners that have an ISV relationship with us. And number three, if you have any further questions, we, you can find us on F10, the, the Mach booth with Arkenio and a couple of our other partners. And if you have any questions, I don't know how we're for time. We, I think we have a, a few more minutes in terms of time. So if you have any questions, more than happy to answer them. We have a microphone there. Um, just let me know what you think. Any questions? Yes, over there. Hello? Yep, yep. Are you able to give any more information on the actual code um, connected development sort of process? Is it a particular language? Is it sort of multi language? Multi language. So everything that we do is there's no proprietary language. We have SDKs to, I think, eight software pro programming languages. All we provide you with is APIs, and you choose how to, you want to connect to these APIs. OK. And the connectors sort of follow the same methodology that the rest of the yep. other tools connect as well. All right. Yep. Cheers. Sure. Hi there. You say you've got the 99% SLA, but say I use the pre-built Agin connector I'm having a problem with my conversion rate. Who supports that? Is that Commerce Tools or is that Agile? Who would get to the bottom of it? Um, we, we own the SLA, so in terms of uptime and, and, and performance. If it is more of a business logic, we would facilitate that conversation to Agile. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show.